Brilliant. Okay, <laughs> so what we're going to do is I am going to share my terminal and we are going to work on this together. Does that sound good? Okay, so let me share my screen. Share my terminal. All right, so I'm an promoter, and what I did was I copied those codes to this place called My Codes. I copied Darts, but I renamed it as Darts MPI, copied LC Generator H. Okay, uh, I, I I did already start editing Darts MPI, so you all can see what I have done. I kind of started showing it to you. Um before the break. Um, before lunch, I believe, I started showing this to you. So the first thing that I did was, since we're since we're doing MPI, we've got to do this pound include MPI.h, okay? What that does is it gives uh, access to these uh, function definitions, basically of all of the MPI functions and also a lot of MPI sort of variables and macros like MPI com world, okay? And uh, MPI data types like MPI status, okay? So um, you gotta always add that. So then the second thing that I did was, this is an MPI code. We're gonna use MPI. So after all of my, uh, you know, uh, variable declarations here, I just went ahead and I put MPI in it, okay? Because that's where I told you all that it goes, because that is where it goes. And then my next step was, I put MPI finalized down here, right before the return zero, okay? So then after that, I started thinking, what am I gonna need? What additional variables am I gonna need here? So I know that I'm gonna have an MPI set. So I added this MPI status thing because you need that for MPI, uh, so, sorry, for the receive, not the send. MPI receive, we need a status variable that goes in there. I also know that probably if I said that, uh, the other two functions that I taught you this morning were useful, then we're probably going to use them, right? So I want to have variables for my rank and the size of the communicator. Okay, so I added those in there too. Um, and then, I'm, then we're thinking about it, right? And we're going to take all of our dart throws and we're going to divide that up evenly amongst all the processes. Right? So um, so I probably need a variable that I can use to store the number of dart throws that I have to do for myself, right, as a, as an individual process. Make sense? Everybody see what those, why, why I have those? Okay, so I also saw that I've got MPI com size and MPI com rank. I just went ahead and and combine those, you know, just define those. Uh, and then my number of tries is gonna be the total number divided by the size of the communicator, right? By Divided by the number of ranks that are doing this work. So is that gonna be completely true? So I, I tell you, I have a million, I think, for the number of tries. What if my communicator size is three? Would I be missing a double? Yeah, right. I'm going to be missing, I guess, one in that case. But yeah, so I'm going to be missing some. So how can I, how can I figure that out? How many am I going to be missing, and what should I do with them? Anybody know? Any ideas? Let's see, we got something in the chat here. Oh, the voice is breaking in and out. Sorry, Joseph. 
And that's not just my voice breaking. Um, yeah. You have like, like you've had a million and three of these things, you could say like, okay, the remainder is, is one, and so at least that's like, um, what are they called? Like rank zero and one, I guess, are already doing enough. Then rank two. Could make it do one extra. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. So the total number that I'm going to be missing is going to be at, at worst n minus one, right? Um, so I could then I could just assign one piece of work to each processor, you know, except for some of them, right? So so then, uh, so I guess with a million and with three, then. Um, you know, one of one of them is going to do, two of them are going to do three hundred thirty three thousand three hundred thirty three, and then the third one is going to do three hundred thirty three thousand three hundred thirty four, right? Okay. Uh, in this case, because you know these are these take just a tiny tiny amount of time, then we don't really have to worry how we're going to distribute them very much. But if these were big pieces of work that each took an hour, you know, then we would then we would start to to be concerned about how we're going to distribute them fairly. So we would probably, for example, because the manager process does have a little bit of extra work that it has to do, we would probably want to not make the manager do it, right? So like you were saying, you suggested give it to process two out of the three processes, and that's a great idea. Okay, so what we need to do then is we need to have another line here and we need to say something about this. So if num oops trials mod com size is greater than zero, right? So that means if we have um, we have a remainder, right? Mod there stands for the remainder. Um, then what are we going to do? That's very interesting. Um, Well, I know how to do this. So if my rank is greater than or equal to, you all check me, check my logic here. Um, size. Minus num trials size, and then we're going to my num trials plus plus. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so, all right, here's my logic. You all can help me check this. So if my rank, because I want to give these to processor, processors at the end, I don't want to give it to processor zero, since it's the manager. So if my rank is greater than or equal to the size of the communicator minus this, um, modulus thing, the, the remainder basically, then I'm gonna take on one more trial. So will this work for three? So if my rank is greater than or equal to three minus one, so that's two, then I'm gonna get another trial. So that works. works. All right, what about like seven? What's the modulus? I don't know what the, a million modulus seven is. Anybody, anybody have an idea? 
I'm just trying to think of things that don't divide evenly into a million. Any ideas? I don't even know. No, I think the logic is right though. You think it's right? You like let's say you have like a hundred and send 175 tasks or something, and you end up with the last 75 doing stuff. Okay, right. Okay, that would be that would be an easier way to figure this out than trying to figure out things that don't divide into a million. Okay. I feel reasonably happy about that. Okay. Um You know, to be honest, we don't even need this this if, do we? Right. We don't even need that if. We just we just need if I if my rank is larger than or equal to cos size minus this modulo thing, then add this to it. Right? Because my rank, if if, if this modulus is is zero, then my rank is greater than or equal to the com size. Never happens. Right? Because the size go if the size is three, ranks go from zero to two. So I don't actually need this if statement now that I'm now that I'm looking at it. Does ever does anybody disagree with me on that? No, everybody everybody seems reasonably happy. Oops. Okay, or you're just so like exhausted you don't care. Could be that could be part of it. Okay. All righty. So then we get to the place where we're throwing our darts. Okay. That looks pretty good, right? Everybody reasonably happy there. I don't think we need to change anything there. <laughs> the big thing that we need to change is when we come down here and we're going to calculate pi. Okay. So who's going to do the pi calculation? That's the first thing. We're going to make the manager, right? The manager is going to be press and zero. I realized I didn't uh, I didn't make a variable for the manager, so let's go ahead and make a variable for them because as a manager, I know you have to feel self-important to have a variable in that creation. Okay, like I said, we always just make it zero, just out of convention. It's easy that way. Okay. So we can say, if uh, my rank is the manager, then all of this stuff is going to happen, right? So the, first, the manager is going to collect, I'm just putting this as a place, book, collect dart row info from everyone else, and then compute pi. Right, and the compute pi part ends here. Oops. All right, so how, if we're the manager, how are we going to collect Dart Throw info from everyone else? MPI receipt? Yes, we're going to do MPI receipts. And we're going to do one for each, uh, you know, each uh, worker, right? So how are we going to, how can we do that? We can do a for loop, right? So let's say for int j equals one, right? Because we don't have to collect it from ourselves. J less than um, com size, j plus plus, okay? We're going to do some kind of an MPI receive. 
MPI receive, receive. The most is complaining about. Oh, sorry. Breaking up. Yeah, I saw that. Does is anybody else hearing that too? Ah, Alexander was suggesting MPI gather. Yes, at this at this point, we could use gather, but um, at this point, we're just using those six basic MPI functions. And so then in the next one, we will we will change and we will use one of the collectives. Okay, so we're gonna use receive and I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna look over here at how receive goes. So first we have our buffer um, that we're gonna receive it into. Let's call that temp. Um, we don't have that defined yet, so uh, I'm going to go up here and uh, define it. So it's a long EMP equals zero. Okay. Um, and then we have how how big of a size that is. If we're collecting one number, right? One number. It is a long, so it's MPI underscore long. Um, and we are collecting it from process J. And their tag is J. And we are in, wait, did I skip the MPI com world? No, it, com it comes next. Okay, I didn't skip it. Um, MPI com world, and then status. And does that need it? That needed an ampersand. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so I received in this temp variable, I received somebody else's throws. Right, um, and so now I'm going to add that to the grand total. So that uh, total is n circ plus equals temp, and then that is the end of my loop. Okay, does that look okay to everybody? Does anybody have a have something they want to add that I forgot in that case. Looks good, looks okay. Okay, so from the point of view of the manager, let's make sure that we've done everything that a manager should be doing. So if I'm the manager, I set, I have this variable that I'm gonna temporarily store the results of receiving the dart throws from everyone else. Uh huh. Um, is there needs to be another ending curly bracket? Not it seems like you started one at the top near the manager. Yes, there is one. You just can't see it. It's not. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was hiding out. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks for asking that question. Good question. Yeah, it's right there. So, okay, thank you for prompting me to show the whole thing. That's a good idea. So, okay, we've got the whole thing visible here now. So I'm going to collect all this and these receives. I'm going to add it to my sum of n circ. And then once I have them all, then I'm going to compute pi. And then I'm going to print it out. So that, that, seems, that seems okay. Okay, well, what if I am not the manager? What do I do now? So here I am, not the manager. Oh, so what do I do? I just gotta, I just gotta um, send my Dart rows to the manager, right? 
That's what I have here. Um, okay, Tony is asking, can we start the for loop from j equals zero and say if j not equal to manager so that the code doesn't depend on the value of the manager? Uh, we could do that. Um, the reason that we're not going to do that is because if statements are actually very expensive to evaluate. So it's best if we just settle on some sort of a convention and make sure that our manager is just zero. That's just the easiest way to do it. It would it would just take us longer. It would be a little inefficient if we were going to have a lot of if statements. Okay, and then in MPI receive, is dest and tag always the same? No, it is not, Wayhu. That is a great question. The reason that I have dest and tag being the same is because it's just easy. Okay? Um, the tag could be used for something uh, useful, potentially. So for example, in this case, we're only ever doing one send, right? But if we were doing multiple sends, then the tag could tell you what type of message that you're receiving. So uh, trying to remember how, how this exactly went, but I had this, I was working on this code, MBI code, and Basically, we use tags that we chose based on our phone numbers, I think. And so for certain types of messages, it was my boss's phone number. And for other messages, it was my phone number. And so it kind of said like what type of message this is. And then from the tag, then you could decide how to process that message. Does that make sense? It was a while ago when we were doing that, but. <clears throat> okay, good. Okay, so so all I need to do as the uh, worker here is I just need to send my darts to my manager. So I need to do an MPI send. And I'm sending my n circ value, right? It is a length one, it is an MPI log. I am sending it to the manager. I'm going to use um, my rank as the tag and then MPI com world. Okay. Does that does that look okay to people? Does anybody have feel like there's something anything wrong here? So actually, my friend over there knows that there's something wrong. You you know that there's something wrong that we haven't done because you asked me about it this morning. I think it was you. Now I'm like, oops. <laughs> sorry to call you out and embarrass you. Yeah. So in this case, um, before the my rank equals manager, will the answer store the results for the manager? Yeah. So if I'm the manager process and I'm going through this, and I'm just going through here, and I I just do the same work that everyone else is doing, and I store everything in answer, right? So that's going to be yeah. The manager is going to get their results in there. And then, um, then I, if I'm the manager, then I come along and I'm like, oh, if my rank is the manager, that's me. And so then I do all this stuff and I do all these receives from everybody. And then I compute pi. Yep. Great question. Okay. One more here. We aren't updating num trials properly. Okay, Alexander, do you want to unmute and talk about this? Yeah, sorry, I may have missed it, but is is num trials getting multiplied by the size of? Yeah, it's being divided by. The oh, size I see. Of okay. Bombs. Yeah. Yeah, and then we might have to add one in extra. 
Yeah. I, I, sorry about that. Um, my implementation, I, I multiplied the total size by the number of ranks rather than dividing. Oh, okay. Well, that you can do it that way. And then you could get an even better result because uh, you need a lot more darts. So just so you all know, in order to get one extra decimal point of accuracy, uh, we actually need uh, 100 times more darts. So that's why this is a really bad method of computing time. Yeah. Oh, I'm missing the, the random seed, right? We're missing the random seed. Didn't you say that yes, to me? I just remembered. You did say that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. So let's talk about the random seed. So um, let's see, I'm going to save my file here. And then you see I have this LC generator here. Okay, so the random seed is called random last. And it is a global variable because we're not coding this for good coding practices. We're just coding this to learn about it, okay? So what we need to do is we need to set random last to our rank, okay, in our, in our main code. My rank. Okay, so what do y'all think? Should I go for it? Give it a shot. Oh, yeah. So I have another question about that uh, random last. So I guess for the MPI one, it would be fine, but for the multiple threads one, do they all use the same random last? Because it's a global variable. Right, right. So you would have to figure out how to set it uniquely for each thread. Otherwise, they're all yes. like overriding the same one, right? Yeah, otherwise they'd just be, yeah, oh yeah. Well, we're going to run into all kinds of problems when we get there because it's not a thread safe algorithm. Yeah. Yeah, Helen's like, why, why are you doing this, Rebecca? <laughs> yeah, we're going to run into big problems there. So we'll have, we'll have to figure out how to how to save ourselves from our from ourselves when we get there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile it. So I'm using the CC compiler wrapper. That's the C compiler that includes MPI when you're working on a Cray HPE HPE Cray I think is what they call it supercomputer. So my object file that's going to be the name of my executable. I'm gonna call it darts MPI. And then um, what am I compiling? It's darts MPI.c. Okay, so everybody cross your fingers for me. We'll see if it compiles. <gasps> it compiled. <laughs> okay, that was a little scary that it actually compiled. Sometimes, well, you, actually I've written this thing probably a hundred times, so. I'm not surprised that it compiled, but it's been a while since I last wrote it. Okay, so now we want to run it. So if you look here, right here, you see how this says login 20? That means I'm on a login node. So I can't run it on a login node. That's, that would be like rude to my fellow uh, nurse users if I ran it on a login node, because you might be on that login node trying to do something and then my code comes in and it takes up all the memory and all the processor and then your stuff gets slowed down. So that would be kind of rude. So instead I'm gonna run it on a compute node. Um, so how am I gonna do that? Well, I wanna, I'm just gonna go for an interactive node. I think that's gonna be easier than trying to write a script in front of you all. And also that way, if I screw up then we can fix it. So I'm gonna do s alloc. Okay, and what that does is that grabs some nodes for me. And, um, well, I don't need to do Q interactive, do I? I just need to do the reservation. That's just, yeah. That's our default is also true of that. Reservation, when it's equals. Equals. Equals crash underscore course. Crash yeah. underscore course. See, good thing we have you here to keep me in line. Minus capital N one. I'm just gonna use one node. And um, I still got to do this, or CPU. 
So I'm going to use a CPU node and I'm going to go for 30 minutes. Okay. Is there anything else? Oh, yes. Minus A and train three. Okay. Because if I'm not in the end train three project, it won't let me get into the reservation. See, is it going to work? Oh, yeah, it worked. Okay. So now you see, you see, before I was on login 20, now I'm on NID 004209. Okay. So if I look here, I've got my code. This is my executable. Let me do ls minus l so you can, oh, ls minus l. Why did the n come from? Okay. So you can see, you see how this has an x? It means it's executable. It means I can run this code or this, this, I should say I can run this file. If I, I can't run any of these other files because they're not executable and they can't be, right? Like you can't run that. You can run this, it's a binary. So another thing we could do is file dart. If I could type MPI, you see it's an executable. Okay. Anyway, so I'm gonna use srun. And um, first I'm gonna run it on one, one core M, or yeah, one MPI process. All right, and I put this dot slash, that means the darts MPI that is in this directory. Okay. Oh, I realized I didn't change this from saying pi and serial, should have said pi in parallel, but that's okay. Okay, so I got pi equal to 3.141648. So it's got, you know, three, four digits maybe of accuracy there. Um, so let's try it now with two. Wow, I got a different answer. It's also not a very good answer, I, but it's about the same answer, to be honest with you, because we've got 3.14 and then this rounds up to two. So let's see, let me try four. Yeah, 3.14148. Okay, uh, let's do, let's go really high. Let's go up to. Let's say, uh, what, can we do 64? We can do 64. All right, cool beans. So you can see, I get 3.14 pretty consistently. The rest of the digits are probably not accurate. So in fact, I can uh, rebuild my code if I want to. So let me just, uh, darts, MPI, let's see. Let me just add two more zeros here. I think, I mean, it'll take a little bit longer, but so then we're gonna go CC minus O. Darts, the I two. Okay, so I made a new executable called darts MPI dash two. So then I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I think we're getting closer to the right answer, right? I think we got, we just got maybe one extra digit, 3.1415. Um, let me try it with like four, it's going to take a bit longer to run, I think. Yeah, so anyway, we're getting extra good answers if we if we add more uh, more darts, so that's a hundred million instead of a million. <laughs> okay, fun times. So, are there any questions about this? Does this make sense to everyone? At least, sort of. Okay, good stuff. So, let's move on to the next assignment. So, the next assignment was. Do this, but 
uh, instead of using those, uh, those, the send and receive, let's use a collective, okay? So what collective should I use here? So let's, let me remind you again of what we're doing. We are running, uh, we are, you know, doing all these dark rows, and then we're like adding up all of the sums of all of these results. So does anybody have any suggestions on what we should use? Gather. Gather? Okay, we could do that. And then what would we have? We would have a long list of numbers. So there's a better one. That would be a good start, okay? That would effectively do what we just did. Then we'd have to add them all up by hand. So is there a way that we can add them? Reduce, yep. That's right, and, and Stefan online also said so. You got it. So we can use MPI reduce. So let me copy my darts MPI C to darts collective dot C. Okay. So instead of all this all this work here. We just need to do uh, an MPI reduce, right? We just need to do right here, MPI reduce. And um, let me get the right format for that one. Reduce. Send both, receive both. Um, so first we put in our send buffer, which is nsirc, everybody has that, and then the receive buffer, what should we call it, nsirc total, let's call it that, and, um, it is an ampersand, and we need to define it, so Long and circ tote equals zero. Okay. So uh, we've got that. And then what's our next argument here? The count and then the data type. Operation and okay. Sorry, y'all, I don't have this one memorized anymore. Um so the count is one. The data type is MPI one. The what was next? Operation that is MPI sum. Yes. MPI sum, and then. The root, that's the manager, and then the communicator. MPI com world. Okay, so then we don't need, we don't need all of this infrastructure here, right? We don't need to collect dart throws. So that's gone. We do need to compute pi, and it's n circ tote instead of n circ. And then we don't need this else part, do we? Because we just okay. So that's how we can change it to to use our collective. Okay, does anybody see anything wrong that I did? Does anybody have any objections or concerns here? Okay. 
You can tell me if I missed something. Sometimes happens. Okay, looks pretty reasonable then. I'm going to go with that. So, uh huh. Can you not put the insert from the manager into the insert post? Or is that also? Um, yeah, so reduce is going to go with everyone's. Including itself? Including itself, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. However, uh, with reduce, this NSERC tote is going to get populated only on the root, which is the manager. So on all of the other ones, it'll still be zero. And if you wanted it to be populated everywhere, then it would be an all reduce. There could be reasons why you want that. But this will reduce the amount of communication necessary compared to an all reduce. Okay, everybody feeling okay about this? Any objections? One, two, three. Okay, um, so now I'm going to compile this. Minus darts collective. Darts collective, let's see. Okay, it compiled, so S run. Minus N four darts collective. Okay, so we did get the same answer that we got before. And if you recall, I didn't I didn't bother to change back to a million dart throws. We're still at a hundred million. Um let's try 64 since we also have that result. Okay, so we got the same results. So that's great. Yay, it worked. Okay, so next we're going to do Dart's OMP. Okay, um, we need to start this though, not, not with a base of this MPI one that I did because that would be bad. Uh, we'll we'll do that for the hybrid, but we need to start it off with the basic darts. So I'm going to copy from Crash Course Darts C um, Darts C. I'm going to copy that here. I'm going to call it Darts O M P dot C. Okay, so with Dart's OMP, we are going to, because we're going to use OpenMP, right? We're going to do pound include OMP.h. And that gets all of our header files. And um, I'm kind of enjoying the 100 million, so let's do 100 million. Um, so that gives us all the header files that uh, have all of the definitions of the OMP process in it. Okay, so what in this can we parallelize using OpenMP? Everybody's quiet. Did anybody say on the chat that we can parallelize? The loop. Thank you, James. We can parallelize the loop, right? Loops are perfect for parallelization in OpenMP. Ideal. Okay, so what are we actually doing in this loop? I mean, we're not just looping. I mean, we are looping, but we're doing something else, right? We are adding a bunch of stuff together. 
right? What would you call that? I'm sorry? Is there a variable? Yeah, that's right. We're, we're adding all these things into M sort. We are taking all of this data and we are reducing it to a single number, right? So this is a reduction, strictly speaking. Okay, so actually we can parallelize this thing if we're not worried about um, variable scope. <laughs> we can parallelize this with a single line, right? We can come down here and Helen, the expert, can tell me how wrong I get it, but we can come down here and we can basically go pragma OMP reduce. Helen, how wrong am I? Am I am I okay so far? Parallel reduce. No. Yes. Let me look that up. Parallel reduce. Reduction. reduction. Uh, MPI is reduced, but open MP is reduction. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yes. See, this is this is why I have to have Helen here, because what would I do without her? Okay. Um, we all do. Well, yes, we all need Helen. That's true. Um, what else do I need here? Yes. I just want to look, look it up. Section, yes. Thank you. So then we have plus colon and n circ. And that's that would be all that we would need under ideal conditions. So, parallel four. Parallel four. Yes. Let me see. Make sure my match is. Okay. So, um, if you recall before. We set um let's see. let's see. That's before the scoping. We're talking about scoping. Right. So now we need to worry about scoping. So I is our index, so that is that is fine. The thing that's the things that aren't fine is X. And y r two also would be shared, but that's probably okay because we're not altering it in any way. And circ is the variable that we're reducing, right? So it's fine. So we need to have x and y be private. So we do that here, right? So private. And we don't need to have them be first private or last private because we're not worried about what they are outside of the loop. So we could just do private. X and Y. Okay, then another thing that we also should should do, I would say, is that we should have, uh, you remember this uh, this random number generator. Here, let me say, let me say this and show you again. The um, LC generator. Okay, so we have this random last, Okay, and so if that is shared, then we're in trouble. 
right? Because we're going to get un we're going to get unpredictable behavior out of this if if random last continues to be shared, right? Because what's going to happen is that seed is going to like let's say that Charles is a thread and I'm a thread, okay? So I get random last; it's equal to zero. And and then I calculate my random number, and then I put and then I set random last to be the next number. Well, the thing is, if Charles also did it, then he's going to overwrite it with his value, or he's going to get my old value, which is not going to be valid for his sequence that he's that he is supposed to be getting right. So so that's why. We want we probably we would want random last to also be private. Okay, so where am I? So you calling LC to random and random last is part of this function, it's private. Random random is, is defined declared within the LC when you find it. Um no, it's a global variable. Random next is private already, I think. Uh, random last because you have the same function, same field, same variables there. Hmm? You have random uh, save. You have save in the function, so there's a save function, save variable. It is global. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because otherwise, without save, it's a within a function. It's a local function. You call right. It, and within parallel region, it, it's private. But if right. it's a save variable, it becomes <laughs> shared. Right. Right. So there's um yeah. So let's go back in here. Oops. Let's go back and look at this one more time. Um, so this variable here, random next, um, that is defined inside of this function that is called inside of the loop. So that, that variable there would be private. But because this variable random last is up here, um, and so it's, it's defined, it's a global variable. Uh, then that would be shared by default and we need it to be private. Okay. Okay, so then Helen, I've got one more question for you. Um, so we need to set random last to be the rank of the thread to initialize. No, start by. Added. So I guess I'm wondering, can I do that before the loop? Or does this, I mean, this thing, because it has the parallel for reduction, then the loop has to be the next line, right? Okay, so I probably have to divide this up into two parts, right? This this pragma. Like I think I have to do this. Or reduction. Helen, I'm glad you're here. And then what I do up here is random last equals LMP get thread num. And then I remove this yeah, part. You want something, yeah, then you need separate them and cannot be Yeah. And then I have to do this, right? Yeah. 
Is that correct? Okay, so do you all see why I had to do it th that way uh, for the thread safety? Or, well, in order to set these seed before this reduction loop, then I have to um, I have to break out first. So this this is our large parallel section, and then um, I set the seed, and then um, in this next line then I'm doing the reduction. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, are there any questions about this? Because I know it's a bit confusing. Let's say double random last equals that, then or uh, double X equals LCT, and then, then the pilot. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. If I had not defined X and Y up here, there. that I could have, yeah, double, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. So Denzel, why does the random last variable not get overwritten by zero when LCG random is first called? Random last variable. Okay, well, let's look at that code and then I can sort of explain it to you. So the first thing is I want you to know that um, with this very first line here where I say pound include lcgenerator.h, you can think of that as basically you take that file and you put all of its contents right here at the very beginning of, of this file, okay? So you can, you can kind of Think of it that way, and, and then it'll help help us understand why. Why is this not? Oops. Okay, so then if we look at LC generator here, so imagine that this is in our um, in our main code file, right? So at the very top of our code file, we are defining these variables. Okay. And then we're also defining this function that's called LCG random. Okay, so at the very beginning, we defined random last to be zero. Okay, but so remember that. And then we go back here to this. And so fr from here, um, random last equals zero, right? Random last equals zero, random last still equals zero. So we're in int main here. Uh, random last is still equal to zero until something happens to it. And then we come into this open MP section here, and finally we define random last to be some number that's going to be zero through number of threads minus one. Okay, does that make sense? So that's why it doesn't automatically be zero at that point. Okay, so um, does this get the Helen seal of approval? <laughs> from, from just looking at it, it's probably not perfect. OMP um, get track num returns the number of rank, right? You're right, I need rank. The rank. That's the rank. The rank. That is the rank. Okay, thanks. I had a moment of panic there. <laughs> okay, yes, so thread num is the, the rank, and num threads is the total number of threads. Okay, great. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's compile this. Okay, so we're going to use CC again. Now, because we're using OpenMP, gotta use this flag, F open MP. Then we're gonna do minus O darts <clears throat> OMP from darts OMP dot C. Okay, everybody cross your fingers. Oh, it compiled. Great. Okay. 
Well, I'm feeling good now. Okay, so the thing that we've got to do to get this to run on different numbers of threads is we got to define the variable OMP num threads. So if I, I can see what it's defined to be now. Not defined, right? So um, that means there won't be any threads. So if I run it, I don't have, I don't have to run it with SQL. Well, you use default, like me. I think I'll probably seems to use the maximum one. Oh, is that right? Oh, fun. Okay, well, let's do it. <laughs> Do I, do I need to run with SRAM? Okay. Oh no, my job ran out. Oh, it's okay. I'll get another one. I was just about to do it. <laughs> okay, I've got a new job. I'm on a new node, right? I was on 4209, now I'm on 4178. Fun times, okay, so. I'm going to run my job here. So darts dash OMP. Let's see what happens. Whoa. Okay, I think there's something wrong. There must be something wrong. But the, I must have done something wrong. But we'll, we'll see. Okay, let's let's set OMP number it. So export OMP num threads equals two. Let's try two. And then darts OMP. Hmm. That's also very wrong. In your original um, solution, you have the critical session for the scenes. Mm -hmm. no. The reason is because without critical, every scene, every start, I get exactly the same sequence of random, so no random method. With all the, we want to run at a time to get the random method. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think like with like she was saying, like with your with the current method, like if you just reset the seed every time based on the That's thread number, you're not gonna get the most random. Like you're just gonna get like multiples of thirteen hundred and sixty six as your random numbers, and so it's like not gonna be a very random distribution. Yeah. Now okay. you're one seed apart. Well, that's that's what we have for um for yeah. the MPI I version. What is in the MPI version, like each each core is running like a bunch of a bunch of numbers, so it's fine. But if you had like if you ran like a million cores in the MPI version, it might you might not get a great result. I mean, you're gonna get a crappy result because it's a crappy uh, number generator. But <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah. Um. Okay. So looking at this thing. So. You think I should add the critical sections? You think that'll shouldn't change because the number of trials big enough. The well, number of trials is a hundred million. Yeah. So that yeah. should be good. Yeah, so if you like even once start running it, and if, if you have to repeat a uh, random number, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, okay. Actually, let it, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't I didn't run it with just one, I think. Let's let's do OMP num threads one, and then let's run it. Okay, well that's that's a pretty good value. Yeah, so I probably I need something like that. So where where do I need it? X and Y. So I so if okay. So if I put it like here, pragma OMP critical. Curly braces. And the curly braces are oops. I hate this. 
Oh. Oops. Using the same random numbers, random enough. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to recompile. Okay, so this is with one thread. Then I'm going to change it to two threads. Oh, uh, it's the C. C is not random enough. You know, it's like they're, they're once one in a sequence, then yes, yeah. sequence part. And um, they're writing, they're also um, they're private, they're not. Well, I mean, it's it. This is interesting because it's not reproducible. I would not expect it to get the exact same answer as. One, I mean, so, with the MPI one, we didn't get the exact same answer. Like, well, I did the OMP loop and I chose a complete random random number generator, like mm -hmm. not like the one you have, it's reproducible random generator. Right now, in X, in, in, in MPI one, I think when each MPI rank has the sequence and then calling them the function, they're completely separate functions. Here, I think they are interleaving with each other. Mm -hmm. So, and you want to see this one. One seed apart, but then this thread is calling the function because of this variable is global, and um, but if it was so, so, so let's say thread zero is getting this that one is is not like one always one apart, so it's getting into the the, the seed used by this thread, and then getting another random number. So the random number sequence is all messed up. I mean, that's why Crystal shows never like shows it. Yeah, so it's the random number then. It's yeah, it not work even if you say it's private in the yeah in the parallel. But the the variable is uh the seed. I think the seed is jumping around. And All right. So somebody's asking me, does private work on global variables? Private does private work on global variables? Actually, I don't see it. It's on the somehow one chat. one time I saw you have to say, but then the other time I don't see it. Can you open up the H file. The, the dot h file? Yeah. Okay. We'll see generator dot h. I think it's not saying. Is that the file? Regular variable, I when you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, it's a global variable. Yeah. Okay, let me just make sure I didn't do something totally stupid. Like I, I did set the seeds for random last, right? <laughs> yes, random last. I did do that. Sorry, someone in the chat mentioned something that uh, might fix this issue. Someone says the cool variables used in a function will be shared unless you use thread drive. Oh. Okay, let's give that a try. So let's do private x, y, and then Red private, random last, and then maybe we don't need yeah, this. Globally, but also start private. Should we try yeah. that? Okay. We're gonna try it. It's an adventure, y'all. It's a Friday afternoon adventure. <laughs> so much supercomputing fun. I know. Oh, this we're, is... all, we're out of time. We're out of oh. Time. 
Yeah, so I, I think it needs to be, you need to put the full Pragma OMP thread private at the top of your file. And that declares that variable as oh. a thread private. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I've never used thread private. Okay. So take that up here, like how far up, like here? Like, here? yeah, 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 I think so. Okay. Well, we'll give it a shot. Pragma OMP thread private random last. And then I think it might still, oh, it looks like you don't have to put it as private in the other one, just declaring it as thread private work. Okay, so that should be, that should do it. Let's find out. Okay, <laughs> we're having an adventure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give her a shot. Oh, no. Declared the private after first use. Oh, you may not be able to say uh -huh. equals zero in the header file. OK, I'll try that. We will try just. I tried it, and it works with equals zero, but you have to put the thread private inside the function. The LCG random. Oh, you have to put it in here? At least that works, and it doesn't work putting it in the file. Oh, OK. So we just put it, like, right here. Pragma OMP thread private random last. Yeah, then the, the, the original other file. Yeah, then delete it from the other file. I guess this is just a good demonstration of why global variables should probably be avoided. Yeah. I mean, basically, the recommendation is don't try to use thread private, don't try to use global variables to complicate open it. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're, we're making our lives miserable with this global variable. Okay. But we're having fun because. It, we're not lost. We're having an adventure because we're all doing it together. Oh, it compiled. Okay. It's half the battle. That's that's half the battle. All right, let's see how it works. Um, on the GitHub, we have the credible there. So I was like, Mari, performance is going to be so sad, but at yeah. least the, the, the seeds are not, not reproducible. Okay, so that's, that's what... Uh, number of threads is two. Let's see about one. Yeah. Okay, look, we got two different answers. So I'm going to say that we got it working. And why don't we update our repo with this? Uh -huh. Yeah, this is a better solution. Talk about thread private. <laughs> now we have to use thread private too. So. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe we can maybe we can just leave it in there. Because the, the answer was OMP OMP loop. There, I had different random number generators. It's completely then then remove the remove the the random matter. Right. If you so had a just random and for function, there's an intrinsic function. Uh -huh. For C, there's another function divided by max random number, and then yeah. they give up from zero to one, completely random, and then your x equals something, y equals something. Both X and Y are private, so they're uh -huh. no more critical needed. But then uh, uh, the results is not reproducible for yeah. Yeah. close enough, 3.14. So correct answer. Mm -hmm. I know you want to demonstrate MPI and OpenMT and everything is reproducible. So your uh, yeah. pseudo uh, random generator is fixed C and then you want to use right. multiple ranks, multiple threads, you still want them to fix C. That adds. Correct. That's true. That's it's the true. rabbit hole of randomness. It's the rabbit hole of randomness. It's actually one of my favorite topics. So if anybody wants to talk about pseudo random numbers, just come talk to me and I'll just talk your ear off. So I see it is after four o'clock. I want to respect everyone's time. So thank you all for coming. If you want to stick around, we can do the hybrid together. Um, otherwise, yes, good advertisement for C with red local random number generators. Exactly. Um, also, there are other actual random number generators, not this one. This is terrible. Um, in real life, you don't want to use this. 
one, and you can see why in the slides at the end. Um, so you want to use something else like um, like uh, the uh, MKL has some good random number generators. So so does GSL. So does there's this one called String that that's what it does. So that's what you would want to do. And yeah, I'm really really grateful to everyone for coming. That was exciting. Um, if you if anybody wants to stick around and do the hybrid, we can do that. Otherwise, you know, it is Friday. <laughs> Probably want to go home. But thank you, everyone. And please don't forget to do our survey. Uh, we really want to get your feedback so that we can make this even better for next.